What I think we'll see over the next 10 years is diversification. I'll give you one simple example when it comes to food. Africa has incredibly fertile land. Africa could become the breadbasket of Europe. Um, Africa could really be investing in agriculture. It's close to Europe. Um, it has a lot of potential for great ports. Um, I, I think some African countries have good ports. It needs to produce. It needs to produce goods. The best way to do that, the easiest way to do that, and it would happen very quickly, is if Europe chose to lower tariffs on food coming in from Africa to zero. Now, Europe won't do that for a variety of reasons, but think of what that would do. That would create a massive industry in, in, in Africa. It would start supplying Europe with food. The food would have to be of high quality because Europeans are food snobs. But the Africans can develop the technology, can buy the technology, can get the technology to develop and grow and produce that kind of food. Who would be hurt? Well, farmers in Europe would be hurt. Many of them would be go out of business. But prices would plummet, and many Africans would get rich. There would be a strong incentive to establish rule of law in Africa. There would be strong incentive to establish property rights in Africa. And Africa would benefit. Europe would benefit. Yes, a few farmers would go out of business because they couldn't compete. European farmers probably can't compete anyway. So there's plenty of people in the world. There's plenty of talent in the world. There's plenty of resources in the world, natural and other, and human resources. What's missing in the world is freedom. And one of the things that happens for businesses in, under freedom, or relative freedom, is that we learn from our mistakes. And I think business has learned from COVID and has learned from the war in Russia and has learned from Trump that global trade is not stable, global trade is not to be counted on, and there are lots, and they need to really think long term and really think need to diversify. And I think that's what business will do. That's what it rational, long-term self-interest of business to do. Now, do I think that countries are going to help by lowering tariffs? No. Do I think Europe is going to lower tariffs to zero to, and, and import food from Africa? No. Unfortunately, I don't think any of that is going to happen. Africa, one of, the, one of the positives in the world right now is that Africa is putting together a inside Africa free trade zone so that they're, they're lowering tariffs to zero between African countries, which is terrific. Now they just uh, need to lower and have lowered tariffs to everybody else. Anyway, uh, so the solution to supply chain problems is more freedom, less tariffs, fewer trade barriers, and let, let companies rise or fall based on the decisions they make. Let companies diversify their supply chains as needed. Okay. Objectivists constantly criticize countries where communism crushes individual freedoms. We're constantly criticizing uh, everywhere, not just communism, where any country that is crushing individual freedoms, whether it's in China and what they're doing to individuals, I constantly criticize China for that. It's sad because I thought China was on the right path away from crushing individual freedom. I, by the way, I don't think China is capitalist, I think uh, communist. I think China is much more fascist than communist. So um, there's no um, objective is to constantly criticizing the, uh, ab the, the crushing of individual freedom anywhere that it appears, anywhere in the world. Whether it's done in the name of religion in a place like Iran, or whether it's done in the name of communism in China, or, whether, or, or, or in any way. But I don't think that the fact that it's being done 
is reason for the government to step in and determine uh, where manufacturing should happen. That should be up left to individuals. That should be left to people. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.